must understand who we are. We must understand the adoption. We must understand that from the time of birth, we receive the spirit of adoption. And the essence of that is because the spirit that we receive, which is the spirit that gave birth to us, is holding our hands and leading us to that place. And the technons of God who refuse to follow the leading or the leadership of the Holy Spirit, their parent, because you're born of him. You refuse to follow his leadership. You are said to remain a babe. You have not grown And because you have not grown, you cannot be spoken of as a wheels. The title of the wheels of God belongs to those who listen, learn, and obey. They follow the Holy Spirit. They walk with the Spirit. And because they walk with the Spirit and they follow the Holy Spirit, they bear the fruit of the Spirit. They bear the fruit of the Spirit. And that means that it's not every technon of God who bears the fruit of the Spirit. The technons of God who bear the fruit of the Spirit are those who incline their ears to his sayings. Who attend to his words. Who follow his dictates. Who keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Look at us today, a bunch of people rescued from darkness. How many of us born again believers who are genuinely the technon of God are building our lives in line with the revealed will of God? How many? Too few. The large majority of us want to build our lives on the things that we want to achieve. It's about you. And that spirit of selfishness is tied to the heart of a child. You have not grown. You are a babe. And because you have remained in that state for so long, you become a part of the company that the, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews said and nicknamed people who are dull of hearing, who are unskillful in the use of the word of righteousness. And so our churches are filled with people walled over. Great singers, great instrumentalists, Great preachers, great bench warmers, in large numbers, but full of babes. Babes who aren't paying attention to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. How do you journey from birth to adoption? By listening, by learning, by obedience. That's how you journey to adoption. May I say that in the plan of God, It is at the adoption that there's a confirmant of 
authority to administer the father's estate. Full administration. I'm not talking about the hit and run ones that we do from time to time. The full administration of the Father's estate is granted us. At the adoption. And that's the reason why we must all journey to come to the place of maturity. We must all journey to come to the place of maturity. There is a price to pay. The Bible says, buy the truth. Why do I need to buy it? Because without sacrifice, you cannot get it. And sell it not. Buy the truth and sell it not. As our journey is to the inheritance, I become an heir by birth. I receive the inheritance at a future time. The Bible says that those who are guaranteed that inheritance are not those who began the race, but those who finished well. Those who finished well are those who listened to the Holy Spirit, imbibed his ways, Received understanding from him. Walked in the wisdom of God. And bore the fruit of the spirit. To them there is an assurance. An assurance of the inheritance. At the adoption. Verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Notice, we didn't say you have received the adoption. This is the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. We are the technon of God. And if children, then heirs. You're entitled. You have a right to. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be. If so be. If so be. If so be, is a condition attached to heirs becoming joint heirs with Christ. I hope you're seeing this. It says, if so be. What is if so be? That means if, if not so be. Right? Then forget it. If not so be then you have been disqualified. If not so be, then he will cast burdens upon you as he says to one of the churches. If you read Revelation chapter 12 and it talks about the man child, lots of people have a great misunderstanding of that. Simple revelation of God's word was misunderstood. A lot of people say it's Jesus, but it's not Jesus at all. There's nothing there that smells Jesus. Outside of the fact that it is his spirit that is at work in them. But it's not Jesus. It 
And he was referring to wheels. He used both the wheels and the technon, but he's helping us to understand. It is to the wheels that the authority to rule the nations will be given. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the wheels of God. Waiteth for the manifestation of the wheels of God. Of the mature sons of God. Why mature sons of God? Because when the sons of God come into authority, then there will be a change of button. They will retrieve the lost authority. They will rule and reign. And in the administration of the estate of their father and of the authority that they have in the kingdom of God, all things will be restored to normal. Corruption will be banished. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Into the glorious liberty of the children of God. When God's children come into their status as wheels of God. When God's technon because the liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travelleth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption. We groan waiting for, meaning that the adoption has not happened. But we're waiting for it. What is the adoption? The adoption is the placement. It's called weostasia. Stasia. Weos. Stasia. Weostasia. The time in which God's children that have been found worthy of the kingdom will receive the placement as sons. And every anomaly will be completely wiped out. And what's left to be perfected. And then the Bible says. We shall be. Just like as he is. For we shall see him. Face to face. Now are we the children of God. For it does not yet appear what we shall be. What we shall be will come to pass. At the time of the adoption. He says. Waiting for the adoption. To wait the redemption. Of our body. And then he goes on and says. A whole lot of things. Titus 2. Let me read from verse 11. It's a popular text amongst us. But there are always new things to see whenever you look at it. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. 
teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. From birth to the adoption is a journey. The adoption is going to happen at the, at the time of, of fulfillment of what we refer to here as the blessed hope. Which you find in verse 13. Because it says, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The moment a man gets born again, as a matter of fact, let me put it this way so we can understand. At new birth, we have renounced worldly lost and sin. As a matter of fact, that is the pledge of repentance. Because repentance is a turnaround toward God and a turning away from sin. Now, the essence of our redemption is to rescue us from sin. And the essence of our redemption is not necessarily to confer on us an ability to enjoy ourselves in this life. Come to Jesus and all your problems will be solved. Come to Jesus and your poverty is gone. Come to Jesus and your promotion is guaranteed. Come to Jesus and you will no longer put on tattered clothes. Come to Jesus and if you're unmarried, you, you suddenly become married. Come to Jesus and, you know, all of these are lies. Be carefully crafted. And taught people a huge distraction from the essence of salvation. Salvation is deliverance from sin. And the loss of that consciousness in the body of Christ has made it so easy for us after our supposed new birth to continue in sin. Why? What is grace? Grace simply means that God has changed his mind about sin. He's no longer going to be so hard with sin. God has a different attitude to sin. We foolishly think. Whereas the demand for morality upon the new creation is by far higher than the demand of morality from those who were under the law. By far higher. To whom much is given, he says, much is expected. What was given for them? The blood of bulls and goats. What was given for us? The very blood of the Son of God. And the Bible says, if the word that Moses spoke attracted such a, 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 a terrible administration of, of, or dispensation of judgment for those who despised it. How much more the one that began to be spoken by the Lord from heaven. Grace rescues us from sin. Grace empowers us to live in holiness. That's grace. It's not a salvation from poverty. It's a salvation from sin and its consequences. All those who were forgiven under the old administration had to still stay in the paradise awaiting when Jesus would come. Because until he came, they could not come into the presence of God in heaven. But they were deemed righteous according to that old dispensation. 
And when they died, they went to the place called Abraham's bosom. And they stayed there. Awaiting the time of the coming of the Son of God. But their sins were forgiven. Yet they had no access. Because the ultimate sacrifice had not been paid. Jesus made it clear, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, he said, comes to the Father except by me. From Adam to the thief at the cross. Jesus didn't promise them that I'm taking you to the Father's presence. He said to that guy, today you will be with me in paradise. You have to wait for the completion of this work. The courts of heaven have to accept the sacrifice. And when the courts of heaven accepted the sacrifice and Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says all the dead saints from Adam to that thief, they all broke out of the graves. For the first time, they were going to journey into the very presence of the Father because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That is the purpose. God made Abraham rich. Solomon asked for wisdom. God blessed him with wealth. Gideon obeyed God. Gideon and his family became wealthy. God did not need the cross to make men rich. But he needed the cross to save the souls of men and bring them into his presence. And we must never lose focus of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Never. So what does the grace of God do? Bring salvation. He didn't stop there. Teaching us who are now born by the Spirit of God that one translation say haven't denied. But that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, there is a way to live. That way to live is our journey to adoption. That is the pathway to the throne. Those who maintain a vision of the throne, of the inheritance, of the kingdom. This is how they live. Three things he mentioned. Sober. They live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age.